So I'm gonna explain Vice City Stories any percent using my PB, um, which is not a, not a great PB, but I think I'm at a point where I can explain it. There will be a lot of skipping through it because I do a lot of safety saves throughout the run. Um, some points where it ends up losing me time overall. Um, I'll skip through those parts. But we'll go right into this. This is my 341-47 run. Um, let's just let's just get right into this. I think we're ready to go. So I'll turn down the volume a lot. So first mission soldier, as per usual. Let's get through the cutscenes pretty generic however what you want to do at the very beginning of the mission is you want to find a soldier run him over <laughs> and get their uh, rifle uh, this comes up uh, this comes uh, this becomes very important right after the mission because we're going to use it to death warp in a specific way now you're just going to continue the rest of the mission as normal Take this little route around here. You can pull back on the stick to go faster, or you can do normal leaning forward. I am not 100% sure which one's faster. Street Fighter is a little weird when it comes to um, leaning forward and backwards, pulling a wheelie. So, I recommend strongly using the Japanese version, because the route differs a lot, but it's a lot easier of a route. Um, as you can see, also, you take no damage on Soldier. Um, I also become parent in Act 2, uh, why it is so important. Uh, pager messages are shorter, which is helpful in some instances, and not so helpful in some instances. instances. It's more helpful than not, though. The pros outweigh the cons. So, tap X to uh, be able to run a lot longer. We're just going to go inside, finish the mission. Hold, hold, um, I recommend holding back on the stick while skipping the cutscene. Okay, so this is the death warp. You're going to, so, I recommend having your M16, or M, yeah, M16 out. You're going to fire this into the truck, and once it, once you fire, um, 19 shots so when it says 0 11 or if you got two rifles um, 30 11 so that 19 shots or more is what it takes to, do, to catch the patreon fire you do not want to blow it up you just want to catch it on fire in international it does not matter whether you blow it up or just get in and, and wait for it to explode on its own however in Japanese it's very important because of the four times the amount of health um, However, the Japanese version, four times m the amount of health is uh, required. You you need to catch on fire, get in, because it'll insta-kill you. So, we've death warped now. We're just going to spam to skip through some of these cutscenes. And we're immediately going to run and grab the ambulance it's there at the hospital now we're moving on to the cleaning house dupe it goes straight into duping um, unlike San Andreas where you have a couple missions before you do it it's just intro mission and duping so you're gonna head to the police station grab the VCPD wintergreen it is a little faster than a cop car I believe because you can lean forward be careful here you want to handbrake a little bit turn otherwise you can ram into the wall and occasionally you can go out of bounds so this is where I'm going to explain On Mission Zero, partially. On Mission Zero is very, very complicated in this game, unlike the other 3D games. There's a lot of frame-perfect stuff you can do with On Mission Zero, which in a task run could work very well for Act 3. However, this is not helpful in RTA. So...
to go on mission zero you need to start vigilante and it has to be vigilante it cannot be any of the other vehicle missions like firefighter vigilante paramedic you have to use vigilante so most of the time you'll be using a cop bike a couple times you do use a cop car but i'm not sure if i do that in this run i don't do it anymore at least um i do believe in 100 percent you use the hunter once for uh on mission zero not sure though um so you start vigilante and you're going to go to where a rampage is and because of the like the hitbox or whatever picking up the rampage you can pick it up through the fence not intended but you can do it that way it's faster inst instead of going all the way around the fence um, cancel it on top of the rampage so what is going to happen is the only reason that you have to do it with vigilante is because it sets on mission zero twice before the fade and after the fade this makes it so the moment you cancel vigilante it starts a fade when that fade starts it also sets on mission zero so in that time you can pick up the rampage that's why you have to be on top of it you can also do this padlocks a little more complicated like ssa padlocks um but then when the fade completes and it says vigilante mission cancelled it sets on mission zero again uh and that gives you an on mission zero rampage if you do it correctly so as you can see we're now on, on thanks for the voice crack uh you can see we're on mission zero you can see the map blip right here I'll probably turn it up a little bit uh so the rampage timer is going um, and you're going to take this very specific route. Uh, I totally miss it and screw up, but normally you don't do that. You're going to go across this wooden bridge. We use it, um, a couple times for the, uh, uh, the, okay. Let me go back here. We use this wooden bridge for the Martinez mil military segment. So now here comes a totally luck-based jump. It's uh, it's hitting this thing, which was put there for use in over the top, uh, one of the lead, the last missions in the game. So it is way less consistent with a bike. Uh, it's a little more consistent with a car, but it's not totally consistent at all. Uh, placebo. Uh, what I found that works for me is p pulling back on the stick which I don't do here, but lately I found that it seems to be more consistent if you try and pull a wheelie. Now, you can, can't really pull a wheelie on a winter green. But, so you're going, to, if you mess it up, you can jump into the base. There's a couple variations of what happens. You can hit it, get in to this little path right here, this little alley. It's perfect. You can start shooting everyone in all the trollos with the pistol. Uh, or you can go flying, get like past this fence and have to go all the way around, all the way to the door that's out by the, by the marker. So, yeah, occasionally you can actually teleport through the wall, which doesn't happen very often. I've had it happen to me like once. Uh, very rare, but works. So what you're going to do is just, you know do most of the rampage I usually like to do 18 because I feel uncomfortable going 19 but so aiming auto aiming in the Japanese version is weird because if you see I'll shoot someone and it looks like it disappears like that I have to re like replay repress down on R to auto aim again However, that's not the case. You can still use the left and right arrows to switch enemies if you're quick enough. If you just stand there, though, you'll have to auto aim. So you can switch between enemies still for a brief period. So you'll just, you know, you don't have to worry about health since you're death warping after the mission anyway, after the duped mission. So I think I may actually end up doing. So you, you just all you want to do is just not so I did get a bug there. There's an emulator glitch uh, where sometimes 
Vic will still do the animation of shooting, but no bullets will come out. What I found to fix it is um, uh, using manual aim for a moment, sometimes pausing and unpausing. I used to think it was caused by save states, but it's not. It's just an emulator issue. It's pausing, unpausing, using manual aim for a bit so it seems to fix it. So we're in a start cleaning house. It's just a simple dupe. Um, so the rampage is still going. Finish off the last two guys, which is conveniently two of them spawned here. So missions com mission completed for the rampage. You can start cleaning house again. Now, a good thing about rampages in this game is that they don't despawn or delete whenever you complete them. They allow you to redo them. Uh, that is VCS only. All the other games, the rampages just disappear. Uh, however, they just change color slightly. I believe. So you're going to take Martinez's Street Fighter again and go across the wooden bridge again. I nearly drive into the water here. I have launched myself into the river too many times here. So I'll just skip ahead a little bit. This is mainly just driving down the main road. So be very careful about traffic around this corner. I've hit too many trucks there. Just drive into the marker there. And you can see the cutscene's duped. And trucks can be very finicky. What happens most of the time is they both spawn at the same time. One kind of gets shoved off to the side. They don't usually flip. It's supposed to be more common on emulator. But I don't think I've ever had the trucks flip so other times really they can do that with one spawn and a second layer the other one spawns that can make the top truck get stuck however that's not always the case so at the beginning of the mission you could have gotten an m16 but what i do i prefer i'm not sure if it's faster or not is take a pistol manual aim and shoot that specific fill right there left over from the cutscene he will fall to the ground and drop an M249. You can auto-aim. It is faster to auto-aim. Uh, I didn't do this at the time I PB. I do it in all my run attempts now. Um, you just gotta sp stand in a very specific spot. It's like right where Phil's standing-ish uh, allows you to auto-aim. Usually it'll auto-aim to the Vic standing next to him and then you can switch to Phil. But either way, that's why I prefer to do it. It's a little easier doing the mission with the M249. So at this point, I'm just trying to figure out how to get in the truck because I'm not used to it being this way. I think this may have been the first occurrence of me having it this way. So what I do is I... Um, it seems to be that the top truck is the one that has fill in it. So I get the top truck unstuck. And we continue on the with the mission. So... Gonna go to the marker. Everything's gonna be duped here. Uh, you do have to be very careful here, because as you can see, both cars are spawning inside of each other. They will blow up pretty quickly. And there's twice the amount of, amount of enemies. This guy can block uh, that first guy there. So I play it safe here. Wait till the all the cholo sabers explode. You don't have to. If you're quick enough, you can just run inside before they blow up, and they blow up while you're in the interior. Red markers are still there. That's just a side effect of duping. You have to kill those specific two guys. You don't have to kill any of the two that are standing, or the one that's inside the floor. You kill them two. Since I'm um, playing it safe, really, so I, it is probably faster here to take a cop car. Uh, but instead of risking being busted, because uh, I don't think you can honk your horn like you can in SA to avoid the cops busting you, I take an Admiral instead. So let's get through here. This is just driving the same route we did there. And here comes the last instance of the weird vent air conditioning, not really sure what it is, jump. Do I make it? I don't. So, I don't make it at all, which is unfortunate, but you can see the car, the sh screen shaking from it ex exploding here. So, um, just finish the mission here. 
the mission's completed, you'll see double fade outs there, and Vic will be in normal clothes. Now, you, now if you have the M249, you want to be very careful here. Uh, you want to shoot the, the uh, Street Fighters a couple times here. Let me go back, check the exact amount. Looks like 7 should do the job fine. 7 M249 bullets straight into it. We'll catch it on fire. It's the same thing as, um, as the Patriot uh, after Soldier. That you have to catch it on fire and then get on it. Uh, a backup if you destroy the Street Fighter accidentally, because it's like one or two bullets difference. Uh, you can the soldiers will be angry at you now because technically you're no longer a part of the military, uh, so they will shoot at you and their guns are very good. So we're back in our favorite ambulance and things calm down briefly. We're gonna take the ambulance all the way to Phil's. Um, I should note that it, uh, some of the rules now are the, the rules are pretty much the same as LCS for emulator, like having to show fast memory access or ignore bad memory access, fast memory, FPS, and game speed must be shown. I have great driving skills here. Uh, so we'll start starting show victory. I'll note that here instead of spinning it normally, I ram into the wall right next to the marker so that it tur turns me like that. Immediately I can get out of the ambulance. Just small minor optimization. So skip through these cutscenes, obviously. So th the miss this mission you do pretty much normal. There's nothing much you can do other than driving optimization and hoping for um, in, in this case I guess I can really say good RNG because it is random what path he takes there's two main pa paths you can take and it branches off into a couple but so we're gonna drive to the police station just a nice quick turn in there nothing really special So, um, another small minor optimization is after you skip the cutscene in that fade out there, we'll be holding X so you can gain control a little bit earlier than intended. So in this case, I got good luck here. This is, uh, it is totally random whether or not um, you get a good path here. If he goes to the right, that is good because you usually want to be more north, so you can use the north pan spray. If he goes straight, then left, you probably want to be using the south pan spray. Uh, there are a couple paths where it just depends. Um, if you start heading towards south and you kill him, you use the south pan spray if you start heading north like if you go through here then up this way you'll probably want to use north um, so let Phil drive by him uh, this is an okay route he's taking usually you want to spin him out just so you, Phil can do that uh, I do believe um, Phil's truck has a little bit more health than normal uh, because of obviously that but it still can take a hefty amount of damage. So in this case, I'm using North Pain Spray, which is faster. Um, because you can just drive in a straight line instead of having go through back roads to the south one. So I'll just skip through this driving because you're just driving down the main road. Oh. Okay, so this turn can be a little tricky blind, but all you do is just really hold left. That's mission pass. You can do a reverse and kind of hit the wall to turn around. In this case, I just did a little slower, but... So, now we're heading on to shakedown. You'd think, it, you'd think it would make more sense to wait for the pager message to come through and then just immediately start uh, 
next mission. That that more goes for NMG because we don't do bo boom shine blowout. Uh, but this is a note that goes for mainly NMG. You want to start shakedown because by the time the page message ends, you could already be closer to shakedown. That's just a note for NMG runners. Um, but obviously, if you're following the route, you don't want to start boom shine blowout regardless in any percent because um, you skip it. So we're going to head through this specific route near the Bribe Star to the trailer park. You're going to pick up this stubby shotgun in the corner of the trailer park. Then run and grab the Sanchez right here. Go around this way. And just jump off into the marker. It's a little faster than running, I believe. Haven't actually tested. So you can just run if you want. Now what you can do there, which I did not do in this clip... Uh, you can hold back, the hold reverse, so square, and right back up into the pole. Pull, and once you see that your, the truck has backed up into the pole, you can press X and hold left. Just a very, very small minor optimization. Um, drive over this ramp, heading towards the store. So the stubby shotgun is a classic... Uh, example of this mission is teaching you use melee we use a gun instead so I really screw up my driving here normally you don't want to be angled here because it will screw up the shot here you want to hit both of them at the same time with the stubby shotgun which I still managed to do but normally it's a better lineup if you're getting out of the truck normally if you had just gone in normal instead of clipping whatever I clipped whether it was vehicle or whatever so spam circle here so you quickly shoot him then aim shoot him you can do a small animation cancel where you manual aim and then press uh, down to or auto aim then press down to manual aim uh, I don't do that in the stores just because it can screw up because it's a small interior however for the two guys shot outside that's what you do because I believe it makes the bullet spread more but I'm not really sure so we've done that store, now we're heading on to the next one. You can again hold X and left to gain con to start moving a little earlier than intended, but uh, another just minor optimization. There are some world record minor optimizations that I will not be discussing because A, I don't do them, and B, they are world record optimizations. But. So this is the second store. Just bring out your stubby shotgun, shoot those two, those two, and whatever you hit, those two or the other other two standing ones. This is another one where nowadays I just auto-aim instead of trying to animation cancel, because you can see it screws me up here. Um, I recommend grabbing a little pistol ammo, but if you're very precarious oh. about inventory management, it's not a requirement for any percent. However... You should be doing it if you do an MG for segments, but that's still an MG. Now we're going to grab another cop bike to start the next on mission zero training. This chains it through four missions total. Well, technically three, then a dupe or troop in this case, as Justin Moose calls it. I just call it a 3x. A lot of people call it troop. So again, we're going to cancel Vigilante on top of the rampage. Normally, I would have... Um, no, actually, I would I would do that. So what you can do here is a small animation cancel, jumping up the bike with the pistol. You can jump off and spam circle to animation cancel. Otherwise, sometimes Vic's, Vic can run towards the bike again for some reason. Uh, if you jump at the perfect right angle, you can jump into the marker coming from that way, but... Sometimes it's hard. To, so this is another uh, example of AI being dumb. And Marty will sprint after you as long as you are sprinting. But you have to be holding down sprint. When tapping, he will not sprint after you. So sometimes he can get stuck. Doesn't seem like he did. Uh, and he'll hop on. So be careful. There's a lot of different examples. A lot of different instances where he can just be dumb get stuck in weird places but we're just gonna head straight over to this marker so we're on mission zero for the repo uh, 
so we're gonna grab this admiral i'm not sure if i take the new route or the old route. i take the old route so you can actually here you can actually just take the admiral through this small gap between the wall and the fence and, and, and a little faster probably just by like two mm, actually probably by a good five seconds so you're just gonna drive over to the blue car I'm not sure if the route I do is the fastest. I believe it's the fastest. Um, again, I'm no expert. So there's a lot of instances here what can happen. What I do now is I take a wider angle out to the door so I don't act, uh, touch the car at all. Uh, except for when I'm obviously in the animation of entering the vehicle. In this video, I did not. But that's what I normally do because then the his dialogue and when he gets up will not trigger until you have control of the car if you touch the car at all other than like opening the door animation uh the dialogue will trigger earlier and he can punch that door and occasionally that will be sufficient damage so you have to get the car paint sprayed now it's obviously slower but it will not affect the run other than time but it will not be like a run killer because you're not on a very strict timer here. So we're going to deliver the first car, minimal damage. And if there is, it happens to be very quickly a better car. If there's like a Comet or sometimes I see Phoenix here. Um, I take, there's a couple routes you can take here. It depends on where he goes. This route uh, there's one route that is con semi-consistent. It's just a general route to take. Um, it basically, it puts you in the same spot. Like, it allows access to whatever paths he goes, I guess. Um, in this case, I go to the highway, and that was a good decision on my part, because he did go... Uh, through the intersection to the main road and he's at this intersection currently I believe it's a little faster going this way if he does that but if he ends up taking a left at this this intersection it's lower then uh, you can drive through the trailer park so the rampage timer runs out don't worry about that you just want it to run out any point after starting the mission and don't want to accidentally dupe it because I'll crash your game duping this mission crashes I believe. So I accidentally knock over the Sanchez here. You don't want to do that. Just because it's a little slower. But. So you usually want to park the, the, the. I believe it's a Sentinel. In a way that you don't knock over the bike. Now we're going. What we're going to do is we're going to make a quick detour. I'm going to pick up this rampage again. You need to be very quick. Because this can be quite a strict time. So we're going pick to pick it up, immediately get back on the Sanchez. You want to be very cautious about traffic here. So you can slow down a little bit, but genuinely don't want to, generally you don't want to slow down. Like I, I get spun out by the cop car, uh, becomes that I get very tight timing, because even a few seconds slowed down uh, is very bad. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try and jump off the bike so we hit both of these guys. Uh, like it hits one guy and then hits the ball, bounces into the other guy. Uh, I, uh, I do not get it. I only hit one of them. So if I hit both of them, I can get in the driver's side right away, be fine. That, of course, uh, makes it so. Sometimes you can accidentally get on the Sanchez. You don't want to do that because, you're, again, you're on a strict timer. So if one of the guys survives or you don't want to risk accidentally getting on a Sanchez, because that will probably be enough to lose you the, the uh, timer. Uh, get in the passenger side because the guy won't be able to pull you out and you don't run the risk of getting on the Sanchez Normally getting on the Sanchez isn't a problem, but if you if it ends up Being in a specific spot sometimes it can screw you over if it bounces weirdly So me slowing down at the corners is for two things one obviously because um, It's a big truck, you know and it's semi easy to flip. Also, a little game that I see a lot of VCS runners try and do is try to lose no TVs. Uh, losing too many TVs will fail the mission, but um, a couple is fine. You see, I lose one there at the very end, but 
it, it's no big deal. It doesn't change anything. So here you want to get a car very quickly because you do not have much time. Because you need to start the next mission and don't and not dupe it. But so you get a Washington here. Usually you can get a car just driving along that road, but sometimes I have gotten screwed over. And there's not enough time to just run there, I don't believe. So we're going to start waking up the neighbors with the rampage time running with sufficient amount. Usually around eight seconds will be fine. Eight seconds or more will be fine. So now we're going to run and grab the Sanchez. Uh, the rampage timer runs out, so we're classified as on mission zero. And now starting another uh, rampage will um, the game will consider you still on mission zero. I believe it's very technical. I don't understand on mission zero fully myself for Vice City Story specifically. So now we still have a rampage timer going, but the game considers us to still have gone on mission zero. So technically, we're going to be passing this mission on mission zero, which. Because On Mission Zero is very strange in this game, it will actually, for Act 1 specifically, will pass the most recently, a mission in the most recently unlocked strand. So in this case, I don't think we actually have access to the missions yet, uh, but technically we have unlocked the Louise strand. I believe it's, we're still waiting for a pager for that, though. So, we will be passing When Fun Day Comes, the first Louise mission, because we, we have not done any others. So, now we're going to be doing a very, very annoying out-of-bounds glitch. I have lost a few runs to this. It seems... It, it's very weird how out-of-bounds works in this game. Basically, when you fall out-of-bounds, it will flip every single vehicle that is loaded uh, on every axis in 3D space. So, in this case, that's X, Y, and Z. So, you're going to park your bike very specifically like that. Get off it right here at this wh these two white and blue buildings. If you see on the map, it's not far from the trailer park. Just so you got the rampage like over here. Come down here, park the bike here. And what you're going to do is tap X to sprint and sprint in the wall. Kind of wiggle your analog stick because you are going to fall out of bounds eventually. Sometimes it can be almost instantaneous. Otherwise, sometimes it can take a while. Unfortunately, if it goes too long, it's another strict time requirement. So takes too long uh run will die so you fall out of bounds you can see i got launched by the bike which is a rare occasion uh but you can see it flipped on x y and z axis so it was upside down facing the opposite direction so you just quickly hop back on the bike and what i i, I do here what i did here is i fling the bike right into that area because there often is a car that spawns there that uh, will despawn the bike now what I normally do is a little safer, I think it loses like a second or two, but it's a little safer, is instead I just spin it and park right about here. Uh, so that makes me not have to worry about where the bike ends up going or if it'll accidentally get despawned by the car if I don't throw it the right way. So I almost forget to grab the bike. And you don't have to worry about picking up grenades because you can't pick them up while you're on a rampage. Either way, you would pick them up in NMG. So instead of starting another rampage, we want to complete this mission on mission one to actually complete what we're waking up the neighbor. So we're going to do the out of bounds glitch again. Um, run in the wall. You want to be very quick here. Sometimes it can just completely screw you over and not throw you out of bounds for a good minute, which is very annoying. But we do it again, the mission will pass in a second because all the vans have flipped upside down and are on fire currently. And they should pass right about now, good. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for the mission to pass, we want to go grab another cop bike from the nearby police station. What we're going to do is we're going to dupe vigilante. So I fall off my bike here, I am... This is very... <laughs> this is, you don't want this to happen. You want to start vigilante before... The rampage timer runs out. So the safe stat would be just immediately as you get the cop bike start the start vigilante. So we're on mission zero vigilante now. We're gonna wait for mission fail to go away because we don't want to accidentally cancel our on mission zero vigilante. So we've duped vigilante now and we want to cancel vigilante 
very carefully. You want to hit up button twice, which is what cancels Vigilante, but no more than twice. Otherwise, it will cancel both instances, losing you the on missions or Vigilante. If you only press the up button, arrow, the up arrow button twice, it will only cancel one instance of Vigilante. So we're going to get on missions or Rampage, and as you can see, we also have the red blip and the text indicating we are on Mission Zero Vigilante as well. So we have both on Mission Zero Vigilante and on Mission Zero, um, on Mission Zero Rampage going on. So we're going to spin our bike around and we're going to hit, and we're going to jump off the bike right about now to this opening. Animation cancel again. I'm going to run down here, grab armor for the next dupe troop 3x whatever you want to call it. So this dupe is very different from the other dupes because you dupe it with Vigilante and a Rampage instead of just, you know, on Mission Zero Rampage. So you want to be very careful because this Vigilante timer will count down from 30 the moment you jump off the cop bike. And you want to enter this marker right when it, while it says 1. So like that, you can see big steps in the marker. So we start it at once, we start it twice in the cutscene. Uh, you can see there's two Vix. Usually there's two Martys. Rarely there can be two Vix. Uh, I believe somewhere it's it's said that you should en enter at two seconds. Don't enter it at one. If you enter it for most of two seconds, uh, you will not be hitting the marker. Because you want to see Vic very clearly walk through the marker. You see there's a free Vic. We still have over a minute before the Rampage timer runs out. So what we do in the meantime is we don't wait, wait around. We get another Sanchez. Um, have some struggles driving. And we're going to use this for the next mission uh, to Victor the Spoils. So we're going to park it in a very particular spot. Park it right here. The front tire should be in line with this kind of angle here. So it's like the second one. So here's the corner of the intersection. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. It's the one right after the first line. So it's next to this Empire site here. So it's about in line. I'm not sure how how uh, particular it is. Hey, is that a Banshee or Phoenix? Whatever. I mentioned that they can spawn there sometimes. I think there's an Infernus there too. So we're going to run back to the trailer park. Do not get another vehicle. You're going to run back to the trailer park. We'll have plenty of time. You do not want to get another vehicle. I repeat, do not get another vehicle. So, so we still have good 15 seconds remaining. So usually I just play around with the Marty or Vic pedestrian. It won't fail the mission or anything. So I kind of just punch him, fling him around. Sometimes I snack his, snap his neck. So we're going to start, uh, oh brother, oh, where art thou? Or ah oh, what? Uh, for a third time, so we have three instances of it running. So we're going to go grab another Sanchez. Um, I'm going to be using this for the next uh, part of, for this mission and the part of next mission. So we're going to drive over to Stonewall J's, be careful here. Because you want to buy only the free stubby shotgun that you get. Park it here on the road, just... Because if you park it too close to the interior door, uh, it can despawn. So press uh, circle twice, I believe is what you need to do. Uh, do not buy one, just get the free one. If you buy one, you won't have enough for death warping later on. So now I'm going to drive to the Brothel. I believe there's a more optimal driving route. Like going on the highway, I believe it's a little faster. Not the highway, but the big main boulevard. Um... Lean forward as you should be. Since you're on controller, you can just very carefully point the analog stick a little bit up, and he'll lean forward down uh, totally. But just because of my habits with other games, I still just tap it forward. So I play it safe here. I re-enter the Sanchez. I'm not sure if you really need to, but I recommend doing it. So there's going to be three Trollo cars stuck inside of each other here. So, take the stubby shotgun, shoot it, Th one, two, and then the third one explodes on its own. So, there's going to be three times the amount of enemies, this is why we've got body armor. Um, so, I'm just doing a bunch of the auto-aim, manual-aim, canceling. 
So you're going to enter the interior spam circle to shoot him. And then you can either manually aim and shoot the bed or you can actually auto aim onto the bed. Uh, most of the time I'll auto aim onto the pedestrian. You can switch to the bed, but occasionally we'll auto aim onto the bed. So that is Oblot Pass because we are on mission one. So we've just passed Oblot, but we still have two instances of it running. So we're going to be completing both these instances on mission zero. Like how I explained earlier, passing on missions on mission zero will pass uh, missions from the highest unlocked strand. In this case, it's still Louise. So, so we passed Oblot normally, and we're going to pass it again because you you just you just have to re-enter the interior, shoot the first guy, then shoot the bed um, three total times because you cannot be in three interiors at once. So spam to skip the cutscene here. So that is taking out the white trash complete or skipped. Spam circle. Uh, shoot the next bed. And that is divorce completed as well. So that allows for early unlock completion. What early unlock of two victors of spoils, which is normally the last mission in the act. Uh, the game split up into three acts, I'll explain that uh, later. So we're driving to two victor spoils. I like to park it across the road, re-enter it again, just to be safe. Uh, it won't despawn because it's not a cinematic cutscene. As you can see, there's no motion capture. It's just generic animations. So we're going to grab our bike again, uh, and this next part can be sometimes, Louise can be sometimes very irritating here. It's another case of 2006 AI was not great. So we're going to go ahead, drive to Sunshine Autos, where the our two friends are, or two gang members of ours are, whatever. Park the bike right about here's fine. You want to recruit them from the farthest possible distance you can by locking onto them and pressing up. Both of them, make sure both the blue arrows disappear. Try not to bump Louise and get on the get her on the bike because you don't want to get the guys on the bike. So uh, if you've done everything right with vehicle management, that bike should still be there that we parked while waiting for the rampage timer to count down for Obwat 3X. So now we're going to quickly pull out our shotgun here. Uh, take all of the guys out again. You can shoot both of those guys at once sometimes. Doesn't always work here. If your Sanchez did despawn, there is a pretty high chance that another Sanchez will spawn here on the road. Or a decent vehicle like a Comet or an Infernus. Still, it's pretty rare that you'll just despawn your Sanchez and get a ton of terrible vehicles. So now you can jump directly into the gates here. I, I did a little bit of Tony Hawk there. Um, it is safer just to leap, uh, not try and jump into the place and shoot them all from outside here. You can shoot multiple ones. I like to get some SMG ammo here for later on. So we're going to enter the interior. I do a quick uh, double kill here. So what I do is spam circle, kill the first guy and quickly lock on, manual aim that guy. However, I messed it up here, but I still managed to do it. I call it the double tap. There's no real name for it. So you spam through all the cutscenes, blah, blah, blah. And that's TVTS, two victors, spoils, complete head. So now we have four missions left. Uh, we have one Marty mission and three Phil missions. I'm going to go ahead, grab another cop bike. This is the first instance of me using safety saves. Uh, do I actually... Do I save here? I do. I, I, I remember at the last moment to go save. Um, this is personally my least favorite dupe. Uh, it kills so many runs, so that's why I safety save before it. Obviously, really slow, but it's probably just failing it once and redoing it.
probably still faster than just doing what mission we skipped. I'll explain at the end how we skipped a uh, certain mission. So I'm being very careful here because there's a cop. I just barely evade him. So he's still in the cop bike still, and we're going to park it in our garage. Uh, that, safety save, this is totally not required. You can just try and do the dupe as normal. I'm just doing it for safety purposes. So save management is a lot more important nowadays with the new rules, but but when I did this run, uh, it's not as important because the rules were not very strict. But now they are. So we've saved the game. I will know on Japanese version the buttons for like ma navigating the save menu and the pause menu are reversed. So to like select something, it is actually circle, and to go back, it's X. That goes for the pause menu and the save menu. So when we're doing something that requires precise button pressing in menus uh, very soon, uh, you will need to keep that in mind. So now we're going to go start an on-mission zero rampage, the one we've been using pretty much the entire run so far. Some good lens flare here. So I'm going to spin the bike. Try and park it. So we don't accidentally get off on the other side. Start vigilante. Cancel vigilante. So I failed here. So I'm very careful not to start the rampage on mission one. So I was just barely not close enough to it. So I started there in the fade, so it's, we're on mission zero, we're all good. That was just very a very scary moment, but we were fine. There's another case of you can you need an animation cancel, but if you're at the right angle, you can actually just immediately start it. Save like half a second. This is the final Marty mission. I'll explain at the end why we dupe it. Uh, so currently we're just on mission one. So we're going to run to the road. Instead of waiting for the Rampage timer to run out, we're going to complete it. And it's pretty scary. Because cops immediately come to your attention. For some reason, I don't know specifically why here they immediately come to your attention. Maybe it's just because it's a main road. Unlike the other times we've done it. So I prioritize people with the actual guns and not the bats. Because for some reason the people with the bats will, the moment you bring out their gun towards them, they'll just run away. Paramedics here can get in the way, but they also will resurrect the Cholo, so and you can re-kill them and they'll still count. So we're just going to finish this rampage entirely. We've already started one copy of the mission. So we pass it, kick the ground a little bit, get ran over by a cop. Sometimes the cops will still aggro on you and can still bust you, but you don't have any wanted level stars. That's... That's happened a few times. Um, I haven't been busted from it personally, but I've seen people, seen, uh, seen other runners that have. So we're starting the mission a second time. Got protection. This is a pretty scary dude. Um... So we'll just skip the driving here, drive to the Brothel again, skip through this cutscene, and grab the, Polar the Polaris V8. It can spawn one of two locations behind the place. It can spawn there, or it can spawn where it did in Abwa, where the Cholo Saver spawned. So you're going to go ahead, take the East Girl first, try and get convince her to get into the back right seat. Uh, I don't, looks like she's got on the passenger side. Be very careful. So, the condition about the dupe here is that, first off, the dupe makes it so that the girl's health bar goes down uh, mouse, goes down twice as fast, you can see, we're over, we've already lost a third of it, and on emulator, it, and on emulator, it goes down faster, regardless. So, in this case, this is a dupe that is easier on real hardware. Same with the next dupe. So we've almost lost half of it. We're going to go get the west one near the junkyard. Somehow I miraculously didn't lose any of my tires for the first uh, two. I didn't. I 
that is very rare to happen. However, Cholos start coming for you make it very difficult. So it is good to have as minimal pop tires as possible here because otherwise you'll spin out even worse. It was very miraculous I didn't get any lost here. So now we're going to get the third one. The very north one convince her to get in the left seat because otherwise the girls can very rarely shoot and kill her. So you can see we have a pop tire now. But it doesn't matter here because this last drive is fairly easy. So we finished the mission. So this is why I'm going to explain why we duped it. Because like I've explained, passing missions on mission zero uh, make it so that you skip another mission from the highest unlock strand. So we have completed Louise strands. However, technically, for some reason, Phil is on top of the um, chain. Or it's the highest unlocked strand for some reason. So what happens with this dupe is you pass it. I'll show here. There. So you saw mission completed first. That was the passing of got protection. But then you saw mission completed again. Got, a got protection dupe passes on two different frames. So once it passes on mission one, passing the main mission, got protection. But then it passes again on mission zero, a frame or a couple frames later. Um, uh, passing a mission in the highest unlocked strand, which in this case is the only one remaining. That's probably why the only one remaining is Phil, because we just finished Marty, we finished Louisa mission ago. So we pass a Phil mission, skipping Boomshine Blowout. Now on to the final dupe of Act 1, and what used to be my least favorite uh, dupe, but now I've got it down pretty well. So, I grabbed the Polaris V8. It's actually, it's probably much faster to grab the Sanchez. That's what I do now. There's a Sanchez parked next to Auntie Polaris' house. You use that later on in Act 2 as well. So we're getting another cop bike, going to save the game again, because this dupe can also be very tricky, but I personally find got protection a harder. So I'm just saving the game again. Once again, circle is the OK button, and X is back, so I'm very particular about it. I do, do better save management nowadays, so I save there in the second slot instead of the first one, and that's just so I don't have to reload. Uh, say, uh, load a different save later on. So now, so up here is one of the hardest things in Act 1 for new beginners, is the truck stop dupe. A lot of people, when they first start running, struggle with this, especially if you're on emulator. Because trucks, duping truck stop is very strange. When duping was first found and tested, it, it was concluded that truck stop dupe will just crash. Similar to other missions, just straight up crashing. For example, if you do waking up the neighbors, no matter what you try, it will, um, it will, um, it will crash, no matter what you try. So now we've started uh, the good old SSA rampage, and we're gonna very quickly drive back to Phil's. Do, do not hit any cars here. Because you want to complete the rampage, because you'll get a very high wanted level here for some specific, some weird reason. Because otherwise you'll ha you'll fail the rampage. You'll still be on mission zero, but you have to go and pay and spray, because you'll have wanted level attention for the entire mission. So we're gonna start the mission. Let's get the cutscene normal. You have to be very careful here. Later. So we're gonna run out. And we're gonna spin the camera to try and spawn the cholos here. So there, they spawn there. For some reason, this little like lot here next to Phil's is considered a path for both driving and pedestrians. Pedestrians, I guess, it makes sense because it's also in Vice City. But for some reason, cops can spawn driving through here. Uh, I'm guessing it has to do with that there's a trap in the code set here, 
in this lot, like, between two of the buildings. So, like, if you're driving to go start a film mission or something, or way later in the game and over the top, uh, if you're driving near the one to the level, there's a police trap. You can see we have very annoying cops. You can see it's a pretty tight rampage time to actually complete it, but we're fine. If I punch the air a little bit, and this is where it comes very, very specific. So, this dupe is very weird, because there's multiple cutscenes. So if two cinematic cutscenes play at the same time, the game immediately crashes. That's what the cause is for a lot of the dupes, um, just that immediately crash. Some dupes, just no matter what, crash even if you... It, even if they don't have cinematic cutscenes. There's other cutscenes where it's not motion capture, which are cinematic cutscenes. Uh, no motion capture, I don't know what the word is for them. But for example, to Victor the Spoils, the beginning cutscene is not cinematic. I don't know if two of the no motion capture cutscenes will crash, I just know that two cinematic cutscenes will crash. However, a cinematic cutscene and a no motion capture cutscene can run simultaneously. So that's how we avoid the dupe here. You have to do something called cutscene duping here. But normally, that only happens if a rampage is running out and you're skipping cutscenes weirdly. In this case, for some reason, tr the first truck stop instance that we're on Mission Zero on restarts and plays the cutscenes again. So he, on em so this is the weird thing. Emulator... So you have to sk skip the cutscenes in a very, very specific way. So you have some cinematic, you have a cinematic cutscene running with a no motion capture cutscene at all times. Until you get through all the cutscenes. Otherwise you'll crash your game. It's very specific. Now, emulator, it seems to be less consistent. However, I have my own consistent setup. I don't know if there's any others. I will also explain the real hardware one. However, I don't run on real hardware as of now. I do have real hardware. I have done an Act 1 run of it, but I do not run any percent currently on it. Because mainly, this is why. And also, I just don't like PlayStation controllers. I used an Xbox controller with my emulator. So I'm going to start, and I'm immediately going to spam X. And you're just going to spam X for a moment, and you'll see quickly there. So I wait till there's two loading flashes... Let me go back here. So I'm spamming X. I don't have a controller show. So it's spamming. I'm spamming. And you can see loading stops for a second. That's indicating that we just get the cutscene. And it flashes loading twice again. And when that second one's done flashing, so right about here, I let go of X. And then wait till this fully fades in. And then press X. Spam it a little bit. But not too much. And then skip this cutscene. And we're good complicated so now three perennials spawn because like i said there's one left over from the original instance and then there's the two from the duped one and the restarted one so i bop the perennial to get it stuck off its side switch the control setup to if you're not already playing on it i prefer control setup one uh, but both there are particular missions for example this one i believe in 90 percent is the only time where you need to switch to control setup two there's another mission where you have to switch to control setup one. Uh, so you have to switch if you're not already using the control setup. Because the reason is control setup two, or control setup one, binds it. So to look behind or to your sides for drive-by, you hold L and then use the analog stick. Because don't forget, PlayStation Portable only has one an analog stick. So you hold down L and then use, like, either go left to look left or right to look right, or hold L and pre go down on the analog stick to look behind you. What the control setup 2 does is that it makes it so... And the control setup 1, R is the handbrake. Control setup 2, it moves handbrake to holding both X and reverse or square at the same time. That's handbrake, which I guess makes a little more sense. And it makes it so that to hold L, you look left, hold R, you look right, and holding both at the same time is how you look behind. So you can still use the analog stick to turn. Because with control step one, you, can, you, can, you can't turn or steer when you're looking behind. 
that becomes important in this mission. Also comes important in From Zero to Hero, but in 80% we skip that mission unless you're doing the international version, which is slower, by the way. Japanese is superior. Also, in international, you have to restart your games several more times. This Japanese is a little more stable, so you only have to restart it twice throughout the run. Unless you fail dupes, like in this case, I'm probably I probably failed truck stop dupe multiple times. Um, I think I fail pack bow at the end, which I'll explain. Uh, and then I have to redo it because I've got the cutscene duping fine, but I think I screw up pack bow. So. Um. So if you fail this dupe too many times, you have to save your game and restart it, otherwise it'll crash right about here. So, turning around, so we've picked up the guys. So now there are several different instances what this truck can do. The best one is where the it's one the the non the dead truck, the one that you're not focusing on, because there's two trucks here because it's duped. The one that you do not need to uh, kill the guys off of and block drives away. And, and the main truck, the one that you're going for, is stuck on its side. Not flipped, on its side. That is the fastest instance. What it seems to be, what I get the most, is that one truck is stacked on top of the other with the non-needed truck on the bottom and the one you need on top. So it looks like that's what I got in this instance. I can tell because there's an up arrow, but... At this point, I'm playing it safe and checking. You can see there's two stacked on top of each other. So, just because I know it's up, the up arrow means that the real truck is on top of the fake one. So here, I'm just checking notes, I believe is what I'm doing here. To see what I need to do. So, in this case, you're going to pull up next to the fake truck. Let your friends blow up that one, and then the other truck gets stuck. And immediately starts that cutscene. And you're gonna immediately hold L and R to look behind. Um, I'll explain. There are s some rare instances where the trucks will end up just in a way that you'll fail the mission. Like like the real truck is fl fl flipped upside down. You'll fail. Um, runs dead if you didn't save beforehand. Otherwise, I recommend restarting your game and trying again. We're looking behind, and we're going to pull to this alleyway here. I get stuck on a light post. And then grab the Sanchez. You need to do it. It's highly recommended for NMG, but you need to do it for any percent. Sometimes backup can spawn still. Uh, but right now, I'm just catching up to Phil's truck. Because you're, you're like, when grabbing the Sanchez, you're like seconds away from losing him. So you need to be very quick. The reason you're looking behind is because it does not spawn... Um, spawn the backup that comes uh, and also decreases traffic spawns but as you can see by that taxi sometimes traffic can still spawn and that has screwed me over in the past so you need to be very particular here at the end of the mission so I get stuck here on the sidewalk it's bad but it doesn't I can I still have time to catch up to him so right at this intersection, sometimes a car can screw you over. But you want to be ahead of him by this point. If you fall off your bike at all from now on, you're screwed. So at this point, you can stop looking behind. You're going to turn around this corner and park right about here. Not very particular. So you're going to skip this final cutscene right as it, right as it is uh, pretty much all faded in. You're going to s press X once. You don't want to s skip it immediately, but you also don't want to wait too long, because otherwise both cutscenes will start playing at the same time. So you need to skip it after it's faded in almost completely, but before the other cutscene starts. It won't crash, it will just not allow you to do the trick. So the way you know you do it correctly is you press X to skip one, you fall out of bounds, you can press X again to uh, put you back on surface. Uh, this, is, this is because if you just were to spam to skip both cutscenes at the same time, uh, both missions, the missions would pass on the same frame, still truck stop dupe would skip marked men, however, the reason we want to skip on, or pass on different frames, is they'll still skip marked men, however, in the, in the time between the two frames, a pager message will come in, now, obviously, it doesn't really come in, but it gives it time to come in, 
So it'll come in. You want to be driving immediately. Comes in right about now. You're going to head right to your safe house. Uh, the faster runners park the Sanchez in the garage. I don't. I just fling it right here and run inside. And then you're going to very carefully, I think I messed it up here, start running towards the save marker as this is swiping away, but you don't want to be too close. In this case, I am too close, so I have to redo the dupe. But if you're at the right distance away, the save marker will spawn, and you want to save 500 milliseconds after you go on mission zero after that page or message. Five, 500 milliseconds or before. So this is half a second. You have half a second to save the game after the, the, you go on mission zero. That's to execute pack Because basically, you're not giving it enough time to, like... It breaks the game entirely. I don't even understand it completely. But it breaks the game, uh, unlocks multiple missions when it shouldn't, skips some missions, um... But I screwed it up here because if you're too close to the save marker when the pager message goes away, save marker will dis disappear immediately so you don't see it. It never really appears. It just doesn't spawn in. So what you would have to do is like walk away and come back, but by that point, half a second will have already passed. So it's very scary, but I messed it up here. So let me try and see. This is the one I do it correctly. So I'll skip through. So again, park. Press X to go out of bounds. And driving away. Pager message comes in a little earlier than normal, but it's still plenty of time. I fling my bike there. Get a little stuck, but I still have plenty of time. I don't move. Pager message starts wiping. And I'm good. That's good. Start walking without sprinting. And then you should be a good amount of distance. So you save. And this is where it becomes very apparent to make sure you know that circle is okay and X is back. In an international, it's flipped. X is okay, circle is back. So you save. And then exit to menu, restart the game. So this is where save management comes in more often than not. That's why I, nowadays I save in the second slot because then for the PACPA save, I save in the first slot separately, so in case I screwed up ACBA somehow, I can s load the second save and try again. However, uh, if I load in the first slot, on emulator at least, I think for real hardware, it just regardless loads whatever your most recent save was. Not sure though. Um, I put uh, For emulator, it loads uh, the highest slot, so I put in slot 1. So it's going to load slot 2, it should. No, it does load slot 1. I did do save management at this point. So the way you can tell that PACPA worked is that if you have a Forbes mission, indicated by F, a Umberto mission, in indicated by U, and a plane icon, which is the airport, I believe it's actually considered Lance mission, on there as well. If you screwed it up, you'll have, a, you'll have no missions on the map. A pager will come through, and then you'll just see a plane if you screwed up PACPA. So that's where I'm going to leave it for today, um, for part one. I'll come back soon for act two. Have a good night.